Amphibious assaults are the most difficult of combat operations. This video ordnance program looks at the new weapons and technologies that enable Marine forces to carry out these complex missions. There are many marine forces around the globe. Britain has its famed Royal Marines, and the Soviets field a sizable naval infantry branch. But the United States Marine Corps is the largest of these, and the best equipped. For centuries, navies have had small marine forces for protecting their ships and carrying out raids against enemy positions on the shore. The importance of the United States Marine Corps grew tremendously during World War II. Highly trained troops, supported by specialized equipment, were needed to wrest control of many Pacific islands from the tenacious Japanese defenders. Battles like Taroa and Iwo Jima became the stuff of legend. They ensured the Marine Corps a vital place in America's armed forces. Today's United States Marine Corps is designed for mobility. Their doctrine and equipment allow a Marine Air Ground Task Force to be deployed to trouble spots around the globe at a moment's notice. This program examines the types of modern equipment used by the United States Navy and Marine Corps to carry out expeditionary missions, especially amphibious assaults. The weapons used to project marine power ashore have changed since World War II. Amphibious assault vessels are more capable than their World War II ancestors. New types of specialized Navy amphibious assault ships, like the Tarawa class, provide a sophisticated mix of naval and air support. And the advent of the helicopter provides a critical addition to battlefield mobility. Well, obviously, uh, the operations of World War II were restricted to certain types of surface assault uh, craft uh, embarked from a, a vessel. Now we have the, that capability in addition uh, to the uh, air assault, heliborne assault uh, capability, which uh, greatly enhances our strike profile and allows us to uh, a wider variety of missions in support of the amphibious landing ashore. Even with its sophisticated new hardware, at the heart of the Marine Corps is its superb light infantry. The weaponry of the Marine soldier is designed for portability. The Marine rifleman is equipped with an M16A2 assault rifle. This is an improved version of the M16 rifle first used in combat 20 years ago in the Vietnam War. The M16 rifle can also be fitted with a 40mm M203 grenade launcher. Fire support for the rifle squad and platoon is provided by the M249 5.56mm machine gun and the heavier M60 7.62mm machine gun. These can be supplemented by the Mark 19 40mm automatic grenade launcher seen here mounted on the Humvee vehicle. Marine rifle companies receive additional fire support from lightweight 60mm mortars like these. Tanks are a constant danger to infantry on the modern battlefield. And the Marines use the man portable dragon guided anti tank missile and also the vehicle mounted tow missile launcher to knock out enemy tanks.
For defense against enemy aircraft and helicopters, the Marines used the Stinger man-portable missile. The Stinger was first used in combat by the Afghan resistance in 1986 and has proved to be highly effective even against sophisticated jet attack aircraft. The Marines are not as heavily mechanized as their army counterparts, but they do have tank support in the form of these M60 tanks with special reactive armor. The nimble LAV-wheeled armored vehicle is used for fast scouting operations. The LAV is typical of the Marines' accent on strategic mobility. It is light enough to be rapidly deployed from the air, slung under the belly of a CH-53E helicopter. These marine weapons are not substantially different from those used by army units. It is not so much equipment that distinguishes the marines, it is their training and organization. Uh, marines pride themselves in discipline and operational readiness. We train probably harder than anybody else. People probably argue with that, but I'd say it's true from my personal experience. Also, uh, the Marine Corps uh, has an air side, we have a, su a support side, and we have a, a ground side. So we have everything all combined in one. We don't have to request support from any of the other branches of the service except for the Navy to get us there. And once we're there, we're able to conduct operations for, well, 30 days ashore without resupply. So we're self-contained. And uh, when you put Marines ashore, you know that they're able to do the job um, until further forces can come on and reinforce them. So. I guess you'd have to say that uh, our uh, all-around capabilities are what really makes the Marine Corps different from other branches of the service. The one armored vehicle unique to the Marine Corps is the amphibious assault vehicle traditionally called Amtrak. Amtraks were developed in the late 1930s and were first used in combat by the Marines during the Pacific battles of World War II. Their unique mobility in both water and on land made them an invaluable ingredient in the amphibious assaults in the Central Pacific. The design of Amtraks has evolved over the past 50 years. The first Amtraks, like the LVT-1, used at the Battle of Tarawa, had no overhead armor. Post-war designs like the LVT-3C used in Korea and the later LVT-P5 had more powerful engines and better armor protection. The LVT-P5 saw combat duty during the Vietnam War. The latest design of Amtrak's, the AAV-7, features full armor protection and has much superior mobility in water and on land than any previous amphibious assault vehicle. Amphibious assault vehicles form the first wave of any contested beach assault. They have many advantages over conventional landing craft. They are armored, so they protect their troops against machine gun and artillery fire. And their tracked suspension allows them to operate over reefs and other beach obstructions which would stop a landing craft. They give the Marines mobility beyond the beach as well. The AAV P7A1 and its uh, two other variants, the command vehicle, the C7, and the recovery vehicle, the R7, provide the Marine Corps an amphibious mechanized assault element from the ship to the shore and then to conduct further mechanized operations ashore uh, in pursuit of the landing force objectives. The AAV P7A1 is designed to carry 25 combat equipped Marines. In actuality, the best number it can carry is 18. It's armed with the M85 50 caliber machine gun or with a new upgun weapon station, an m Deuce 50 caliber machine gun, and a Mark 19 automatic grenade gun. It's armored uh, with aluminum alloy armor designed to resist uh, artillery fragmentation and 7.62 uh, armor piercing round. The AAV-7 swimming ability comes from its boat-like hull and special water jet propulsion system. 
The water jet draws in water from above the track and expels it out the rear. These jets can be steered by the driver to turn the amphibious assault vehicle while in the water. They give the vehicle a speed of eight miles per hour in the water. The special watertight hull allows it to operate in 10-foot swells. On shore, the amphibious assault vehicle serves as an armored troop carrier. This unique versatility, both on land and in the water, makes it the invaluable tool in amphibious operations is able to transport troops inland at speeds up to 45 miles per hour under armored protection. The AAV-7 was originally armed with a turret-mounted 50 caliber machine gun, and they are currently being modernized with an upgunned weapon station with an additional 40 millimeter grenade launcher. The uh, armament of it is the upgraded upgun weapon station. It's got a 40 millimeter grenade launcher, with a Modus 50 caliber machine gun, which uh, really does put down a lot of firepower compared to a few years ago. The essential naval ingredient in amphibious operations is the amphibious assault ship. Since World War II, the United States Navy has developed a range of sophisticated warships specifically for amphibious operations. Among the largest and most capable of these are the amphibious assault ships such as the USS Saipan, a member of the Tarawa class of amphibious assault ships. Saipan in an amphibious operation plays a very central role uh, because she has most of the forces. Uh, we have all the uh, helicopters uh, and the Harriers, and uh, we would have the greatest majority of the troops, and so the troops would go ashore by helicopter uh, from our deck or by boat uh, through our well deck. On first glance, ships like the Saipan resemble regular aircraft carriers. In fact, there are substantial differences. The biggest difference between uh, the LHA and, the, and the, the regular aircraft carrier as we know it are the catapults and arresting gear. We don't have catapults and arresting gear. Uh, we cannot operate conventional uh, fixed wing uh, aircraft. So uh, you can look across at the other ship here and, and see they have the, the catapults and arresting gear. And that's what enables them to uh, operate conventional fixed wing aircraft. And uh, we can't do that. The Saipan carries aircraft and helicopters that directly support marine operations. This includes transport helicopters and Harrier vertical takeoff jets. The Saipan is an amphibious assault ship, so the marine aircraft are aboard basically uh, to transport the Marines and to assault the beach. So there are three or four different types of helicopters. There's the Cobra, which is the attack gunship, and will provide cover for the other helicopters that run in with all the troops. We have uh, H-46, the two uh, main rotor-type helicopters. We have H-53, a big Sikorsky helicopter, which carries a lot of troops in. Uh, normal uh, complement would probably uh, be uh, 10 uh, big 53 helicopters, maybe another 8 or 10 uh, 46 helicopters, and 6 or 7 Cobra gunships, and then a normal uh, Huey H-1 uh, uh, command control and uh, gunship. All these come on here and as you can see we only have uh, eight spots so normally the aircraft are staggered and parked around the deck. Uh, during an amphibious launch uh, we uh, have all the Marines uh, in sticks and lined up underneath the, uh, underneath the deck here 
we move the aircraft on spot, they turn up once they're ready to go. We give the high sign, the people bring the troops on, they're loaded in the aircraft and they're gone in five minutes. As soon as they're leaving, the other people are already hooked up with tractors to the uh, second wave of aircraft and they're pulling them out. The, uh, it's really fast paced. Uh, they come in, the aircraft come back and refuel. We refuel them in 10, 15 minutes, load more troops and they're gone. But the Saipan is more than just a mini aircraft carrier. Its motto is Omnia Facimus. We do it all. The Saipan and her sister ships of the Taroa class also have a large well deck of the stern, which allows them to land and embark landing craft which bring supplies and troops to the beach. Inside her cavernous hull are storage facilities for the supplies needed to conduct an amphibious landing. In the event of casualties, the Saipan has extensive medical facilities. We have uh, next to the hospital ship the the largest and most complete uh, medical facilities afloat. Uh, four operating theaters uh, and a 48 bed ward uh, plus uh, an intensive care unit of about 20 beds and an overflow uh, for recovery of some 300 beds. So we have about a 350 bed hospital in this ship that's uh, really an extensive capability. Supporting ships like the Saipan are the smaller amphibious transport docks, the LPDs, and the dock landing ships like LSD-37 Portland. The uh, USS Portland is a, uh, an LSD, landing ship dock. Uh, it's a misnomer in a way because uh, the Portland is not a landing ship. We don't actually land, uh, but we carry organic boats that do land on the beach. Uh, we also have uh, helo capabilities, uh, platform for uh, launching uh, helos. Our main mission is to support the Marines in uh, getting them to the beach, be a uh, helicopter or uh, assault craft, or in the cases we have today, the uh, AAVs. The entire stern of the LSD is filled with a large well deck, which acts as a miniature harbor. It can contain 50 amphibious assault vehicles or various assortments of landing craft. We have uh, a well deck that is capable of ballasting down and bringing water into the well so we can bring assault boats uh, or landing craft uh, inside our well. So we can either be dry or wet depending on what our mission is and what we're loading. Or we can be a combination of that. We can have uh, partly a dry well and uh, partly a wet well. Uh, what we do is we have a number of ballast tanks, 44 of them to be exact, and uh, we fill these with water and it ballasts the ship down. We open our stern gate and, uh, and flood our well deck, so to speak. This well deck is 422 feet long and 48 feet wide. In the case of the AAVs, uh, we would ballast down to about uh, two foot over the sill um, to bring the, uh, the AAVs into our well. We'd bring them all the way into a dry deck and, and position them uh, in the forward part of the ship uh, all the way back. For the Marine Corps, these amphibious assault ships offer versatility, well suited to the complex demands of amphibious operations. One reason I like the landing platform dock is that I, I have several options of how to, uh, to uh, get my Marines off the ship and onto the shore. I can take them out by, uh, by, uh, by boat, through the well, I can take them out by uh, a, a salt amphibious vehicle, or I can take them off by helicopter. That gives me three good choices right there. And I can do those all at the same time if I have to. 
the Navy still uses landing craft to bring supplies ashore. But the main innovation in supplying the beach assault is the air cushion landing craft, called the LCAC for landing craft air cushion. The LCAC's propulsion system creates a pillow of air underneath the main platform. The air pillow is contained by special skirts around its edge. Forward propulsion comes from a pair of large propellers at the stern of the craft. The LCAC has several advantages over conventional landing craft. Riding on a cushion of air, it is five times faster than a normal craft, over 50 miles an hour in calm seas. In addition, the LCAC can bring the supplies right onto the beach. The LCAC can carry 60 tons of supplies, even including tanks. The sophisticated controls of the LCAC are closer to that of a jet aircraft than a conventional ship. The LCAC can be used in conjunction with the Navy's amphibious warfare ships. During long sea voyages, the LCACs are nestled inside the well docks of the mothership. The helicopter is one of the most important innovations in marine operations since World War II. Troop-carrying helicopters can carry out landings away from enemy defenses with speed and precision. For objectives uh, ashore, uh, far ashore, uh, 15, 20 kilometers and, and farther, uh, in a rapid assault uh, and seizure of, uh, of these sites, are greatly enhanced by the helicopter. The, the amphibious assault vehicle, although a tremendous asset, uh, is strictly uh, restricted by a surface assault. It's uh, slower and uh, uh, takes longer time to seize certain objectives. Helicopters are used in amphibious operations in conjunction with amphibious vehicles and craft. The combination of air and sea-based power complicates enemy defenses and adds a critical element of surprise. The helicopter uh, gives the Marine commander um, a large option. Um, he's able to um, conduct the amphibious assault uh, with uh, an added surprise to the, uh, to the enemy. Um, when you come across the beach, um, whether you're coming across in mic boats or LCACs or AAVs, um, you're coming right at the beach. And uh, if the enemy's defended the beach, um, he's got his defenses oriented towards you. If you have a helicopter, you can use that to put troops in at the decisive time on the enemy's flank. It'll surprise him, and it'll force him to commit some of his troops to another area that he wasn't ready for. The CH-46 Sea Knight is the backbone of marine helleborne assault. It is a helicopter equivalent of the amphibious assault vehicle, also carrying 25 troops. It is fitted with a rear ramp and can carry small vehicles if needed. The home of the CH-46 during amphibious operations is the LHA amphibious assault ships such as the Saipan. The Marines board their helicopters from the holds below and can be over the beach only minutes after launch. Besides its principal role as a troop transport, the CH-46 can also be used for many other missions, such as supporting Marine raiding parties ashore. If need be, the CH-46 needn't land, but can extract the raiding party in the dramatic fashion we see here. The heavy lift for marine helleborne assaults comes from the massive Sikorsky CH-53E Super Stallion. The Super Stallion can carry 38 troops and has greater range than the CH-46. It is often used to carry heavy loads and supplies for marine assaults. It 
It can even carry the Marines' LAV, light armored vehicles. Here we see a pair of Super Stallions being refueled in midair while carrying LAVs. The latest advance in Marine vertical lift technology is the V-22 Osprey tilt rotor aircraft. The teeth of the Helleborn assault are the AH-1TC Cobra and the improved AH-1W Super Cobra. The AH-1 attack helicopter can escort the transport helicopters during a Helleborn assault and provide gunfire, missile and rocket support to the troops once they land. also operates the unique AV-8 Harrier Vertical Takeoff Strike Fighter. The Harrier was originally developed in Britain, and the new AV-8B is a joint effort between British Aerospace and the American McDonnell Aircraft Company. The Marines recognized the suitability of the jump jet concept for their demanding assignments. The Harrier does not need a conventional runway for takeoffs. It can operate equally well from the small deck of an amphibious assault ship or from a small clearing of land in a marine beachhead. The Harrier can carry out ground attack missions in close air support of marine ground troops using bombs, or it can be armed with air-to-air -air missiles to protect the beachhead from enemy aircraft. Marine aviation also includes high-performance jet strike aircraft like the FA-18 Hornet and the A-6 Intruder. These can operate from land bases or serve alongside Navy strike units from the deck of Navy supercarriers. The United States Marine Corps is a fighting force especially suited to America's global maritime strategy. Its unique blend of highly motivated fighting men, supported by the latest advances in high technology weapon systems, has earned it a well-deserved reputation among the elite fighting forces of the world.